tonight's forum, representing the League of Women Voters of Bellingham and Whatcom County. Tonight, we have Spanish interpretation available. If you're watching via Zoom, you may use the interpretation symbol on your screen and select Spanish to hear the program in your preferred language. So founded in 1920, the League is a nonpartisan organization with more than 700 affiliates in all 50 states. Our goals are to encourage informed and active participation in government, increase an understanding of major public policy issues, and influence public policy through education and advocacy. The League never endorses candidates or political parties. Membership is open to all people age 16 and older, and we invite you to join us. Tonight's forum is being broadcast on the City of Bellingham YouTube channel and BTV. Recordings of this program in English and Spanish will be available on the League of Women Voters of Bellingham Whatcom County website. The forum will be rebroadcast on Bellingham Community Television, BTV, through Election Day, August 2nd. No portion of this forum may be rebroadcast in part or in full without the written consent of the League of Women Voters of Bellingham, Whatcom County. Questions for this forum have been prepared in advance by the League with input from the public. The Cascadia Daily News, Linden Tribune, Salish Current, Northern Light, and 102.3 KMRE Community Radio are our media partners. Tonight, we are hosting candidates for the 42nd Legislative District Senate position. The Washington State Senate is made up of 49 members, one from each legislative district in the state. One half of the membership of the Senate is elected at the general election held in November of each even numbered year. During legislative sessions, the legislature is called upon to enact or reject legislation affecting public policy in the state, provide for the levy and collection of taxes and other revenue to support state government and assist local government, and appropriate funds for these pur purposes. The Senate also has the exclusive power to confirm certain gubernatorial appointments. Although laws are enacted only when the legislature is convened in formal session, policy issues and the general operation of state and local government are under continuous review by legislators serving on permanent and interim study committees. Washington State Senators serve four-year terms and their annual salary is $57,876. So I'd like now to introduce and welcome the candidates. Tonight, um, we have uh, Sharon Shoemake, Ben Allenboss, and Simon Sevzik. So here are the rules. Each candidate may make, will make a two minute opening statement. Then each candidate will be asked to respond to the same questions. Candidates will have up to 90 seconds for their responses. Candidates will have a one minute closing statement. I will ask candidates to speak in the same order as their names appear on the ballot. So candidates, uh, when you have 50 seconds left, Eileen, one of our league members will say 15 seconds. When your time is up, uh, she will say time. Please stop speaking when she says time or I will ask you to stop speaking. So are there any questions before we start? Okay, then candidate Shoemake, please give your opening statement and you have, um, I believe one, one minute for that. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Sharon Shumake, and I'm an economist at Western Washington University, where my training is in agricultural, natural resource, and environmental economics. As an economist, I analyze if a policy really works, and I think that's a useful perspective to have in the state legislature. In fact, I'm the only economist in the legislature. I moved here after going whale watching in Anacortes, and I looked around and thought, well, gosh, who gets to live here? 
soon after the answer was that my family gets to live here. I'm married to the best husband in the world. We have two kids and a dog and like you, we just really love this place. In the state Senate, I wanna work on affordable housing. We just haven't done enough. There isn't one answer, but you have to be willing to make tough calls that create more affordability. And it needs to be at the state level because if Seattle doesn't build enough, people move here. If Bellingham doesn't build enough, people drive until they qualify and this impacts our roads and our rural communities. People end up moving to places where they may be in harm's way from flooding or wildfire. And so many people moving to rural areas really changes the character of those rural areas. We have to do better. And my vision is that people who grow up in Whatcom County can still afford to live here. Um, I really appreciate the League of Women Voters for holding this forum. I see it as vital to democracy. This is the only venue where you get to hear what candidates will do to safeguard voting rights and women's reproductive rights. These are tumultuous times and violent times sometimes for democracy and Washington needs to be that safe haven. With the recent and looming Supreme Court decisions, there are just so many things we need to do here to protect your rights. So we need to make sure that women have a right to access the health care they need. We, every year, Republicans in the legislature, however, introduce bills to make it more difficult for women seconds. to be able to access that health care, to be able to choose who you love. We also need to make sure that we're protecting your right to vote. So Republican Kim Wyman will tell you we have the best, safest system in the world. But every year we see Time. challenges that make it more difficult to vote here. OK, thank you. So candidate Ellen Boss, your opening statement, please. Hi, I'm Ben Ellen Boss. Um, I have lived in Whatcom County the entirety of my life, and that would be 43 years. Um, I'm a husband, a father, I'm a farmer. Um, I've worked at the Cherry Point Oil Refinery for the last 21 years, where I'm currently an operations foreman. Uh, my wife and I direct market um, local beef to the local food enthusiasts. Um, I went to Linden High School where I played football and I was um, lucky enough to have Western Washington University invite me to play football for them. And in return, they, they paid for my college. Um, otherwise I may not have been able to, to go to college, but um, while I was there, I've always been interested in agriculture. Um, and I was very disappointed to find out that, that they didn't have any ag program. So one of the big things, one of the big issues going on at the time that I was in college, uh, the Dairy Nutrient Management Act had just passed. And while um, I'd grown up as a, you know, fourth or fifth generation farmer in Whatcom County, I, I knew how to grow seeds. I knew how to, to work on my equipment. I knew how to tend my livestock, but what I really didn't understand as much as I could was um, my impact on the environment. So I choose to do the, take the majority of my studies at Huxley College of the Environment. Um, that served me. That has proven to serve me well um, in agriculture. It served me well at my job in the oil refinery, and I find that it serves me well um, in my endeavors on public service. Um, I started out um, being appointed to the planning commission. I served there for a few years, getting my feet wet in, in plan use policy. Chaired the charter review, got elected to county council, and here I am running for the senate. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So, candidate Selzik, your opening statement, please. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters uh, for hosting this forum. If we haven't met before, my name is Simon Sefcik, and I'm your current state senator here in the 42nd Legislative District. It's been the honor of a lifetime to get to represent you in Olympia. But as some of you may know, my story is, in many ways, an improbable one. Uh, this was not something that I would have expected to be doing in this stage of life. Uh, but in my heart, I've always believed uh, that those who love their community can make an incredible difference. Uh, many of you taught me that years ago. Uh, you see, in many ways, this form is personal to me. Uh, though some of you may not remember me, I remember some of you. Uh, because even when I was 14, 13 years old, I would volunteer when the League of Women Voters would host forums, for example, at the Mount Baker Theater. And some of you were the ones that encouraged me to, to learn, to listen. Uh, some of you were the ones that reminded me that as we grow, so do our responsibilities. And even some of you were the ones who encouraged me to run back in the day. But I'm running for state Senate because I've always believed that we can face our challenges and improve our lives here in Whatcom County. Now, 
After serving in the state Senate, I know that this is true. I believe that we have to restore our sense of common purpose and build a new future. I told the Whatcom County Council back when I was appointed in January that I do not view Whatcom County as a conglomeration of red precincts and blue precincts. That instead, there's no such thing as a, a Democratic mountain or a Republican river, but that instead, we drive on the same roads, we eat at the same restaurants, and though our stories are different, our futures are intertwined. We are neighbors, and that's why we have to focus on returning affordability, restoring public safety, and reinstating accountability in our government. You're going to hear all candidates say a lot of things in this forum, but I want you to remember this. I will listen to you, and I will learn from you, especially when we disagree. Thank you. Thank you. So now the first question is, what changes, if any, to the gun safety laws in Washington state would you oppose or support? And we'll start with candidate Shoemake. Your response, please. Yeah, thank you so much. I think we should regulate guns. I grew up doing rifle repractice at camp. My uncle and brother hunt. That's not what I'm worried about, but we do need to make sure that we keep our kids and our family members safe. We need red flag, flag laws. We don't need weapons of war. Guns need to be locked up. And these are recommendations put forward by the International Association of Chiefs of Police. And for good reason, police chiefs are, and police members are impacted by this too. So I wanna use evidence-based policies that are reasonable, that protect us, that keep us safe. And that includes kids, that includes those who are maybe having suicidal ideations, that includes uh, victims of domestic abuse and violence. So I, I really think that with everything, it's the data and evidence and figuring out ways to implement our values. Hey, thank you. Candidate Ellen Buss, your response, please. Yes. <clears throat> I think that uh, I agree with um, with Sharon about statistics and data being relevant to the conversation. And I think that if you do believe that, um, I don't think that the statistics around gun control support the assertion that less guns or more guns equal less crime, less guns equal more crime. I believe I believe the statistics um support more guns equal less crime so um i i believe that the second amendment is there for a reason i believe that um uh guns are a tool and um if we're worried about evil in this world we should address evil and not the tools that it uses um so one thing that I would change. I, I I do not support the the magazine capacity ban that was passed last session, and I would like to to go back to the way um, we had it before in the state, where we had we had fairly reasonable gun laws. And fifteen seconds. And I think that that I think that reasonable gun laws are um, conducive to a safer society, statistically speaking. Time. Okay, thank you. So candidate Sefcik, your response, please. Well, well thank you for the question. I, I very much appreciate it. You know, I think uh, this is something that uh, has been discussed many times and, and ultimately we need to make sure that law abiding citizens uh, do have uh, are, and are able to exercise their constitutional rights. We also need to make sure uh, that criminals and those potentially that, that struggle with mental health issues are not able to do so. Uh, what I don't think the answer is is a ban on things like semi-automatic weapons, which Representative Shoemake has called for even just a few weeks ago. I believe that we should listen to our local police chiefs. And if we listen to our local police chiefs, what they'll tell us is that in many ways, the Second Amendment and, and the right for law-abiding citizens to possess weapons makes our community safer. Uh, when two sheriff's deputies were shot at a few months ago, it was a group of law-abiding citizens exercising their constitutional rights that kept them safe until other law enforcement officials were able to arrive. Uh, rather than banning semi-automatic weapons, what we need to do is make sure uh, that our gun laws make sense. Uh, and I don't think the data indicates that more possession of weapons necessarily needs, needs, leads to more crimes. And so 
That's why ultimately we need to listen to what our local law enforcement are sharing. And that's why this entire mentality also at the same time to strip away law enforcement of their tools and their ability to do their job doesn't make our community safer either. And so that's why ultimately we need a balanced approach and the legislature has gone too far in the last few years regarding this issue. Okay, thank you. Question number two, what role, if any, do you think state government should play in alleviating homelessness? And we'll start with you, candidate Ellen Boss. Your response, please. Well, I think in a perfect world, we all take care of our neighbors and our family members, but obviously we don't live in a perfect world. So I would much prefer that the state didn't have to step in and that uh, families could take care of each other and church groups could take care of their communities and communities could take care of each other. But, but we haven't seen that happening. So um, over time, uh, because most of the causes of homelessness are, are people who have burnt out all of their opportunities with their groups um, that have supported them in the past. So um, I do support uh, taxpayer funding for mental health facilities. I've supported it on the uh, and my role in the council. Um, I, I think that the state should actually spend more money than they have in the last few years on mental health um, infrastructure and, and um, professionals and have it be more available to the folks that need it. I think because what we've seen in the community is, is that you know, seconds. even people that are are just slightly struggling, that are just getting ready to slide off that that cliff of, of instability, don't have access to to mental health treatment. Okay. Thank you. Candidate Sefsik, your response, please. Sure. Well, as you mentioned, I think that the difficulty we're facing in our state is is multifaceted and uh, the, the problem of those experiencing homelessness is one that uh, has many has many causes. As candidate Ellen Boss mentioned, uh, there are many times uh, components about uh, burnt relationships, burnt bridges, so to speak, that help contribute to these problems. Uh, our lack of affordable housing in Washington state also contributes to that problem, uh, which is why you know, we, we need to address uh, some of those underlying issues when it comes to, to mental health and substance abuse. And we need to do so in a way that makes sense. So I'm not automatically opposed to these government programs, but I do believe that we need to follow the data and make sure that the money we're spending uh, has an actual return of value, uh, both to those experiencing homelessness and to the taxpayers who are funding those programs. And we also need to, to have housing policies that make sense rather than uh, continuing to push for a net electrification of, of houses by or, or no natural gas houses by 2031, which will only increase the, the cost and the price of housing, we need to make sure that there are better housing options for all of those involved. And ultimately, we need to make sure that we address this issue in a humane and compassionate manner. And if, if, we, if any of us went right now to downtown Bellingham, we would see that there are people really struggling right now. And that breaks my heart. And so we need to make sure that we're compassionate and effective in our answer. Okay, thank you. Can you make your response, please? Uh, someone's uh, homelessness is a housing problem. We see that when communities have higher rent prices, the homeless rate goes up. We see this over and over again from data and evidence. There's not enough housing to meet demand in our community. And when I was out knocking on doors, I spoke with people who have seen their rents increase by 50% in one month. In the last budget, we made a $400 million investment in the Housing Trust Fund, historic, but this is projected to only add about 4,000 units statewide. We need 180,000 to 250,000 units statewide. We have to look at private market solutions as well as build more subsidized housing. And if we don't, prices will continue to climb. Working people will be continued to be priced out and squeezing and addressing homelessness becomes even more difficult. So 
not all families are mentally ill. There's lots of reasons why people are homeless. Sometimes a business goes wrong and you have teenagers that are living in a car. There's about 18 different reasons why someone is homeless. So we need about 25 different types of policies to help address that from tiny homes to more affordable subsidized housing to mental health care facilities. And I fought for and won funding for two new mental health care facilities in Whatcom County, the Crisis Stabilization Center and the Way Station. We do need these mental health care facilities and the Way Station I'm particularly proud of because it was a project that Peace Health came to me, um, the Opportunity Council, and a whole bunch of other homeless advocates said, this is something important to our community. And I said, gosh, when you have that coalition, that sounds like a great deal for Whatcom County and for housing generally. Okay, thank you. So question number three, if elected, what policies would you support that would help ensure equitable access to nature and its mental and physical health benefits for everyone in our state. And we'll start with candidate Sefcik. Your response, please. Sure. Well, I think one of the reasons that many of us live here in the 42nd district is because of our, our wonderful and pristine uh, nature and environment. I mean, the fact that we're able to uh, literally have a competition called Ski to Sea, where you can be on a mountain full of snow and then be uh, in an ocean a few hours later is, is incredible. And so I think that's one of the things that makes Whatcom County unique, and it's what makes Whatcom County special. And so I think we need to uh, continue to look at ways to ensure that uh, we are allowing those uh, that live in this area to be able to access uh, the, the wonderful and pristine environment uh, that we have. And whether that's using uh, public lands, whether that's uh, using different uh, private uh, public partnerships so that uh, you can go ride your horse on a trail, uh, even if it's owned by a, a private entity, uh, that those options are, are extraordinarily beneficial. I went up uh, uh, two days ago uh, to a facility yes, near the, the East I County, and uh, it was a great example of a public-private partnership. Uh, that's been done here in the county and across the state that allows individuals to enjoy the pristine beauty uh, that is Whatcom County and that makes this place uh, such a wonderful and special uh, land for all of us. Thank you. Candidate Shoemake, your response, please. So there's, I love this question, by the way. Um, my seatmate, Alicia Rule, had a fantastic bill on outdoor education that we're trying to make it an entitlement that every kid gets some sort of access to learning in the um, Another really important piece of this is more funding for park and trail. I heard a story the first time I read about a kid that was killed in Kendall by riding his bike on 547. The community was devastated and they'd been working on a way to try and get a safe path in between where the homes are, the Opportunity Council unit, the school, the library, and they just weren't getting anywhere. And so I basically fought and fought and fought until we got $4 million to fund this trail. It's going to be a while till it's built, but I'm so thrilled about this. There's also opportunities with organizations like Whatcom Land Trust. So access to California Creek up in the Blaine area. Um, that was a new um, acquisition and it could be a kayak highway where you can kayak from one spot to one spot. Um, but generally we also need to make sure that we're connecting um, within cities, but also between cities. I've been talking to the county about possibly making making some connections between um, Birch Bay, Ferndale, Blaine, um, et cetera, and Bellingham. So that folks seconds. can go from one community to another community. And I just want to bring back a dream that I heard from a friend who grew up in Ferndale, where she used to ride her bike to Birch Bay. And I think that's kind of dangerous now, um, but I'd love to figure out a safe way to make that so all nice. kids can ride their bike there. Okay, thank you. Candidate Ellen Boss, your uh, response, please. Yeah, thank you. As a farmer, you know, I'm I'm just naturally um, in tune to being outside and, and and working in nature. But I hate to say that that if I'm elected, this would probably fall very low on my priority list. I think we have a lot of things in Whatcom County that we need to fix before um, I would concentrate on this. And I'll give you some statistics on why I say that. Um, like I said, I think it's important for, for people's mental health, but we have to recognize that two, -third of our, two thirds of our county or, or the district, the 42nd district is national forests. Um, back in 2014, when I was on the planning commission, I believe we had eight times the acreage of parks of any other county 
in in the state of Washington. And since then, we've had the reconveyance where we've and and added other land where we've where we've doubled the acreage that we have. Um, I think we reach our level of service on trails for the next 57 years um, population growth. So I think this is an area where Whatcom County's really excelled, and I'm very proud of that. But as far as uh, my effort as a senator in Olympia um, um, on, on on this particular issue, it, it might fall lower than than things like affordable housing or managing our river or mental health. Okay, thank you. So this is the last question. Higher education is one means of helping to reduce societal inequality. What kind of legislation would help increase access and affordability, especially for our marginalized groups? And we'll start with candidate Shoemake. Your response, please. Excuse me, yeah. I didn't hear I didn't hear the question. Can you repeat it real quick? Sure. Okay, um, sorry. Higher education is one means of helping to reduce societal inequality. What kind of legislation would help increase access and affordability, especially for our marginalized groups? Candidate Shoemake. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, another question that I love. So expanding access to those making under 100K or less was a priority that we did in, I want to say the 2019 session. So before we had a state need grant, but it was never fully funded. So there are people that were eligible that couldn't get that help. Um, I think that that's not the only way, though. We need to also make sure that we have a robust system of apprenticeships. There are some people like me that are big nerds that could read a book all day, but there's some folks that just think their brains work a little bit differently and um, they're just as smart, they're just as capable. We just all do different things. Um, one thing though that we have to realize is that the kids that make it to higher ed are the kids that went through, that did well in the K through 12 system. And that's not everyone and we need to catch them. We have one of the lowest rates of people filling out the FAFSA. Um, we also need to make sure that we're funding early childhood education because we see that when kids get high quality preschool access when they're three, they're more likely to attend college. That's one of those key important parts um, I hear over and over again from businesses through my Western job that they want to hire graduates who have cultural competencies, who understand how to work across cultures, who are thinking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so we do that at Western. And I think it's really important that all our professors at all our institutes of higher ed, all the way from apprenticeships, BTC, Whatcom, and the four-year schools are also thinking about how do we make sure that everyone feels welcome here and everyone can succeed. Hey, thank you. Candidate Ellen Boss, your response, please. Yeah, so, you know, I, I went to college and I don't I don't think that I came from a, a, a family that probably could have afforded it. So, you know, other options for getting there are are near and dear to my heart. But with that, I'll say that I don't think my, my self worth has anything to do with whether I went to college or not. And anymore, it almost seems like your return on investment with um, your college education is is almost not worth it. So um, I support I support getting having folks have an equitable access to college, but um, college isn't for everyone. And it, and I think that we would be better served if we if we dropped that whole mantra that everyone needs to go to college to be successful. Um, I think trade schools are wonderful. I think um, just the school of hard knocks is, is a wonderful thing. Some some of the most successful people I know um, didn't even graduate from high school, and and people may look down their nose at them, but you know they're farmers. Seconds. And so um, I, I, again, I don't think that this is an issue that I would prioritize a tremendous amount ahead of things like managing our river, um, economic development, okay. um, and, and those types of things. Okay, thank you. So candidate Zephyr, your reply, please. Great. 
Well, well, I, I appreciate the question. I am, I just have to say a little bit intrigued that of all the questions to ask about, there hasn't been a single question about taxes. There hasn't been a single question about inflation. There hasn't been a single question about crime. There hasn't been a single question about the flooding or the river or some of the issues that, that are most pressing on, on a lot of people's minds. Uh, but when it comes to, to higher education, I have the honor of serving on the uh, committee dedicated to higher education uh, in the Senate, and uh, this is a very important subject because, you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, this is still a, a dream, in many ways part of the American dream for so many people. And so we need to focus on especially uh, career technical education. We need to expand pathways for uh, nurses, for example, because there's a huge demand for, for nurses right now, and that's why uh, Whatcom Community College is doing a great job right now uh, with their nursing program, as is uh, Bellingham Technical College in Western. And so we need to continue to expand pathways for uh, those uh, careers that are especially in high demand right now. And at the same time, you know, remind people that there are plenty of other uh, great opportunities to, to go and get a job uh, serving as uh, a plumber or a technician or an electrician. And so uh, this is a, a very uh, sort of broad subject, but but absolutely we need to make sure that those who, who want to go to college, that there are responsible ways for them to do so. And at the same time, continue to expand opportunities through having a county, for example, that's conducive to economic growth, okay. that's a safe environment and all of those things. Okay, thank you. So candidates, it's now time for your one minute closing statement. And we'll start with you, candidate Shoemake. Thank you so much. So in November 2016, many of us woke up worried about where our country was going. And my personal realization was that nobody was gonna save us. In a democracy, the white knights are us and civic duty means more than showing up to vote every four years, so I ran. And I get things done because I'm honest, I listen, and I work across party lines to deliver for the people of Whatcom County. We've done really good work, but it's not done. Affordability and housing are top issues for me. We've been doing a lot of good work on flooding. I've been making sure that we get the revenues for them, that we're being thoughtful about how we're better protecting communities. And I'm just gonna say it when it comes to data and evidence, there's only one economist up here on this stage. There's only one economist even in the legislature that knows how to evaluate evidence on things like do high capacity exactly. magazine restrictions, increase deaths in school shootings, and the answer is yes. So I wanna thank the organizers for putting together a forum like this where we can hear how candidates stand on things like public schools, abortion access, and that we're looking after the little guy. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So your closing statement, candidate Ellen Buss. Uh, it makes an assumption that um, the person doing the school shooting isn't going to find that magazine somewhere, whether it's legal or not. They're not doing it because they're, because they're um, willing to abide by the law. Uh, and, you know, this whole forum, I apologize. I, I, I know that you guys put forth a lot of effort, but part of the reason that I feel like I would like to go to Olympia is because a lot of the solutions that I see coming from Olympia are really out of touch with um, the reality of what it is to live and work here in the 42nd district. And I think that some of these questions that we were posed today illustrates that as, as uh, the Senator mentioned, um, we didn't talk about crime. We didn't talk about economic development. We didn't talk about um, managing our managed river system. And so um, I find when I go throughout my day that um, folks feel like they're not being heard. And I really feel like it's because the majority of people okay. in Olympia are out of touch with reality. I would like to take my reality to Olympia to bring forth um, experience-based solutions. Okay, thank you. thank you. And candidate Sefcik, your closing statement, please. Well, thank you again to the league for, for putting on this forum. I very much appreciate it. You know, I, I didn't script out a closing like Representative Shoemaker, so I want to speak from the heart. The, the bottom line is this. We do need to look at the facts. We do need to look at the data. And if we do so, we can see that, that the people that have been returned to Olympia since 2018, uh, are, are the ones that haven't addressed many of these issues. In fact, the, the policies and the voting records uh, since Representative Shoemake has been elected have only made these issues in Whatcom County even more unaffordable. They've made crime even worse. And that's why I've been honored to have the sole endorsement of any candidate of the Fraternal Order of Police, of WACOPS, because we need to address the public safety and homelessness situation that is threatening our future. I believe fundamentally that the future of Whatcom County 
can be improved. I love this county, but I don't love the direction that our county is headed. And that's why I got involved, because I believe that young people can make an incredible difference in their community. And I believe that a okay. new energetic and empathetic voice is needed for Olympia. That's why I'd be honored to have your vote. Okay, thank you. So on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I wanna thank the candidates for being here today. And I wanna thank all three of you for caring enough about our community to run for public office. Voters can find more information about the candidates online at vote411.org and in your voter pamphlet. Ballots will be mailed July 13th, 2022. Your ballot must be postmarked or in a ballot drop box before 8 p.m. on August 2nd. Please remember to sign the ballot envelope and if mailing by postal service, we recommend you mail early. Thank you and good night. Thank you all.